All right. So um, again, welcome everyone. Thank you, everyone, uh, that uh, to join this class tonight. Um, I am your instructor. My name is Norman, and um, I will be teaching um, the microeconomic principles uh, course uh, uh, to you guys in uh, the spring 2021 semester. Uh, unfortunately, right, so because of the pandemic and stay at home order, uh, uh, everyone um, here, I, I believe you are stuck at home. You have um, a very, very uh, frustrated uh, time to, to do the remote learning uh, again, right, after the fall semester. Uh, most of you guys are, are planning to, to come back to the classroom, but then um, uh, unfortunately, the reality is uh, we cannot. Uh, so. We have to stuck on the, the internet world uh, again, right, this semester. So today what we're gonna do is uh, basically go over some of the um, um, stuff that um, actually helps you uh, to success in this class. For example, um, the first thing we're gonna do tonight is to go over the Canvas course shells um, to explain how you are going to get the resources uh, in this class. And after that, we are going to take a look at the course syllabus together, um, and then we will go over the, uh, the registration process on Achieve, which is the online digital solution we adopted uh, this semester. And um, after that, um, I would say maybe I will have like a 10 minute uh, break of 10 to 15 minute break uh, before we start uh, the presentation for chapter one. Um, so for the second part, Right after the break, the presentation for chapter one is an optional. Uh, so why I said is an optional, because um, this semester we are going to adopt. Welcome. <laughs> so um, for the spring semester, this semester, um, especially for this class, uh, we are adopting uh, to have um, the lecture to do online. So I will be posting all the chapter uh, videos on Canvas for you guys. So um, you guys can actually have a asynchronous um, learning experience for those chapter materials. But it doesn't really mean that um, I am going to just uh, 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 throw you a, a, a safety net and then well, I will walk away. Um, I will be holding your hand just like um, you are taking the class um, face to face. I will be um, uh, offering different office hour time for you guys to ask questions directly from me uh, on Zoom. And as well as I will be uh, having you guys um, uh, uh, schedule time with me at any time, any, any date uh, of the week to ask me questions. I have a reason for that and I am going to show you some statistics later um, why I am making this switch to a synchronous uh, face to face Zoom meeting lecture to a asynchronous um, online video lecture for this semester. And I'm hoping that data will convince you why this might be a better solution to you guys. But in general, um, that's what we're gonna go over. So the first hour, we are going to go over the Canvas course shell. I will show you everything. I will hold your hand and walk you around in this course and how you are gonna get your materials uh, to study. And then I will show you where you are gonna get your grades. So, uh, which is on achieve uh, the digital solutions. And um, after that, there will be 10, 15 minutes break and then we will come back and do the uh, chapter one presentations. So again, I have a student just joined. So I'm going to post the, um, I'm going to post the uh, sign-in sheets uh, on the chat box one more time. So here's the sign-in sheets. Um, anyone who haven't signed yet, uh, feel free to click on the link uh, to enter your name there. All right, so one more. <laughs> So I got one more student joining right here. So here you go. I have another student uh, just joined. So here is a sign sheet uh, for your attendance tonight. All right, so let's uh, start our journey uh, tonight. So by switching over to our Canvas course shells. Um, I don't know how many of you guys uh, first time taking classes at CCSF. I'm hoping that it's not the case, uh, many of you. Um, so I'm just going to assume most of you guys know what Canvas is. So here you go. So I'm showing you my browser here and I'm going to click on home and I'm gonna click on student view. So you can actually see exactly what you are going to see on Canvas. So um, at CCSF, um, 
uh, when we are doing this online uh, remote teaching uh, 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 methods, uh, we are told by the school that we have to stick with Canvas regardless, right? So we have to make sure students have a place to retrieve the material of the course. And basically what we are trying to um, set up on Canvas for this class, uh, it's basically um, having all the material gathered in one place. So you guys can actually check those material. You can watch the video there. You can actually see announcements here. You can see the syllabus here. Um, so you have one place to have all the materials uh, that you can uh, retrieve, right, uh, for the course. Well, on the home page, to be honest, there are, there are not much uh, to show you, right? So basically, it's showing you uh, some descriptions of the course, and then there are some uh, infos about myself, right? So there are there's supposed to be a picture. I don't know why it's disappeared now, um, but my contact right here. Um, there are two places on Canvas which I will strongly recommend you guys to check um, either later tonight or maybe later this week before the second week starts. So number one, I recommend everyone to go to announcements um, at least once a week. Okay, so um, once a week, um, I you can pick a day, right? So, okay, well, Saturday, oh, I remember Norman told me that uh, I have to check Canvas, right? So uh, no, let's just check it, right? One time in the week. Well, the reason is because um, I will try to keep you guys up to date of, about the course every week, hopefully every week, right? So maybe remind students, hey, you know what? This chapter is coming uh, due this week. So make sure you, you work on this assignment right? and stuff like that. So um, I will be posting announcements and as well as I will be sending out email to students to remind them what's coming up and uh, what you need to do, right? Or maybe what changes we are making. So um, if you do not receive my email, then the last hope that I have to pass on these messages to you guys is this place right here, which is under announcements. So as you can see, there are three announcements that I have already posted. So the first announcement I believe I posted, uh, it's the welcome message right here, which you can try to uh, uh, watch the video, how I uh, welcome students in this class. Um, and well, obviously my hairstyle are totally, it's totally different from what I am right now. I actually have a ponytail right here now. Um, it's much longer than I was uh, last uh, semester. Um, and um, I have my course syllabus where you can download from this link. So as you can see, there is a PDF file that's called Econ3, uh, oops, 601, so it should be 501, but anyway. So um, uh, 2021 SP, right? So spring semester, you can actually download this syllabus and open it on your computer. And uh, of course, we will come back to this syllabus to go, to go over some of these uh, informations uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, but um, hopefully uh, it's a very easy place where you can find your course syllabus uh, of the course. If we go back to the announcements, uh, there is a, uh, another message called first lecture meeting. And I'm hoping that's uh, where you are getting the uh, class meeting uh, link right, for tonight. Um, for most of you, I also sent out email to you guys about the first meeting, uh, Zoom meeting link. Um, so this is exactly the same link that you join for the uh, uh, class meeting. So um, you can actually see uh, how I am going to uh, post uh, all these announcements, I right? remind you guys what's coming up. So here, there is a third message that's called achieve registrations. Again, we will come back to this uh, message uh, in just a, a few minutes. So this is a um, message that I sent out to you guys for registering the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the Achieve Online Digital Solutions. So we will come back and, and, and walk through this step-by-step -step together. So I have a message right here and asking, so we will use the same link every week. So that's a good question. So um, that's kind of relates to how the course is being structured in this semester. So let me, show you another very important features on Canvas before I can answer your questions here. So announcements, it's something that I would prefer students to check every week, right? At least once a week. Here's another features, uh, it's called modules. 
Uh, so uh, Mark said uh, they only he only got uh, two of the three messages, uh, but not the one about achieve. Hmm, that is interesting. Um, I might need to check on that once. So uh, that's a good question. So does does everyone actually getting the uh, the announcements about achieve registrations on the Canvas announcements? So if not, that's okay. I'm going. I, I can actually post uh, the, the the link uh, on the chat box. You might only be looking in the recent sections. Ah, okay. I see. So, ah, maybe um, I think Mark is looking at this recent announcements, the homepage announcements, which only going to show you like a very limited number of announcements. Maybe the most recent ones. Yes. Right. So I see those two. But I. But also, I when I bought the book on the. The bookstore website. I did use a different email address. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that matters. Uh, I did not use the CCSF email address when I bought the textbook. Oh, when you bought the textbook. Hmm. Yes. So, so I will get to that in just a few minutes. Um, okay. Um, but that's a good question, and keep that uh, keep that uh, keep me in mind uh, when we get to the uh, achieve registration process. Uh, so that's a, that is a very very good question, and I do want to actually answer that question specifically for you and maybe someone who have the same uh, problems. So another um, feature that I would suggest everyone to um, go to is the modules features on Canvas. So this is the place where I break down all the course materials uh, by chapter. So as you can see, I have different sections set up here. So I have chapter one. I have the PowerPoint slide that we are going to go through later tonight. So you can download this PowerPoint and read it. Oh, you find it? Okay, that's great. And um, also I have a discussion uh, board that I created for chapter one. If you have any questions related to chapter one uh, assignments, uh, feel free to post it here and I will answer them. Uh, as well as I would assume other people who saw the question and they know how to uh, solve those problems, maybe they can help other students to, to resolve those uh, questions, right? So the discussion board, it's basically created for students to interact uh, in this class. And I'm hoping, hoping, right? Hoping that a uh, student might uh, utilize it later. And if we move to chapter two, uh, there is a PPT file, again, the PowerPoint slides that you can download and also, as well as there are two external links, those are the links that link to the online lecture video that I recorded in the past for this particular topic. So if you click on it, it will bring you to this uh, 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 browser, right? This uh, uh, media player. And what you need to do, it's basically just play the video. And this is a video that I already uploaded on, um, on YouTube, so you can actually view it uh, directly on Canvas. So um, I have those videos uh, for you guys to learn the topics covered in chapter two. So what it means is I will not need to teach that topics again when chapter two comes in person. So what happened next week then? All right, so week one, we are going to cover chapter one, which I'm gonna talk about tonight. And I will post a video somewhere here. But chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, and chapter six, um, uh, every other chapters later, I will post the videos lecture uh, with the material covered in that particular chapter. So what it means is um, in the later weeks in this uh, course, after week number one, students are not required and they are not asked to join the lecture meeting, uh, scheduled it on Wednesday from 6.10 to nine o'clock. They are only given this video, right? To watch, to learn the material about the chapter. However, again, my work, it's not done here. My work just begin when you start watching those videos because um, during those week, I am also offering you guys two additional hours of office uh, hour for you guys to ask questions. So what happened is when you finish watching those video, 
and you start working on the assignments to get your grades, but you struggle to answer some of these questions, right? You are wondering some of this material. You can either join my office hour that I offer for the class to the class and ask questions face to face in not face to face, but in, in person on Zoom. Or you can schedule time with me at different time, right? It doesn't really need to be uh, the scheduled office hour, but you can send me a message and let me know, hey, Norman, I want to meet you uh, on Thursday from two to three, are you available? And I will try to accommodate students' schedules. So in order to accommodate our students, I am trying to make this lecture less painful for you guys to, 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 to watch. Um, there are many students um, last semester uh, filling the lecture for three hours uh, sitting in front of a computer is a torture. Literally is a torture, right? Because you do not want to face a computer and someone talking several miles away on the screen to teach you those material, right? It's very difficult to sit there and just listen. And, and sometimes you can actually ask questions but you have to uh, uh, do it with the checkbox, right? You have to type it out or you have to wait until the, the lectures end. So in order to um, better serve our students, I have decided to switch the synchronous face, uh, one, uh, the, the scheduled time lecture meeting with the replacement of this pre-recorded lecture meeting. So you can actually spend your own time to pick your own time to go over the materials. Well, I'm going to uh, basically um, answer the earlier questions from uh, Mariana, right? So um, is every week we have the same link to join the class? And my answer to you is yes. However, you are not required to join the class at six, uh, uh, six o'clock and 10 minutes past um, every Wednesday uh, starting next week. Right. So this week, it's probably the only official meeting you're going to join. What happens starting week number two is that student will have an office hour from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. And I will be there. I will be there with this, uh, in the same uh, uh, meeting link. So if you do have questions to ask in week two, feel free to meet me on the same meeting link at eight o'clock. Or if you feel like, hey, Norman, what if I wanna uh, 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 ask you a question at six o'clock instead of eight o'clock? Totally fine. All you need to do is to shoot me an email or maybe send me a message on Canvas inbox and let me know, hey, Norman, I prefer to meet you on Wednesday next week at six o'clock to seven o'clock. And I will be there, okay? So you do not need to worry. Hey, Norman, there is no class. I'm worried. I will be, I will be, I will be uh, lost, right? I will be failing the class. I cannot keep up with the class. Don't worry. I am holding everyone's hand here. If you need to ask questions, send me email, send me message, schedule time with me, right? So uh, do a one-on-one -on -one meeting on Zoom. I can accommodate everyone at any possible way. So therefore, I think most of you guys might have questions about this, uh, 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 this course right here. So do you have to join the class, right? So what happened if I missed the class? There will never be a missing class in this particular class uh, in the spring semester because I do not have any required meeting for you guys. I have all the lecture posted on Canvas. So you watch the video lecture at your own time and you can make your own schedule to learn at your own pace. So one more question right there from uh, Kathleen. Um, is the homework based off the chapter size or Canvas, uh, the chapter homework on Achieve? So that's a good question. Um, I would answer that question in a very tricky way. I would say is based on both. Um, so on Achieve, there is an e-textbook where you can actually read the chapter materials um, uh, at your own pace. And uh, my chapter presentations, right, the video that I recorded for the class, it's for people who prefer 
to learn the materials um, in, in a more interactive ways, right? So, or maybe in a different style, right? Because everyone learns stuff in a different way. Uh, there is a audio learner, there is a, uh, a visual learner, there is a uh, creativity learner. So there are different learners. And I think there, there should be some student who prefer to have something to watch and listen in order to learn the materials rather than reading off a textbook from a screen. So therefore, I would say um, if, if you find that the textbook is totally enough for you to get through the, uh, the, the homework materials, feel free to skip my videos lecture, okay? If, because, well, I'm basically trying to explain some of these concepts in a different way than a, than a textbook does. So uh, it might not be uh, uh, totally in line with what the textbook uh, actually presents in, in, in certain way, but they are, they're connected for sure. So if you feel like, well, you, textbook is good enough, forget about the lecture video, that's okay. If you feel like, hey, textbook, it's too difficult to, to understand, and I like the video, well, go ahead and go back to the video, and I am pretty sure my videos is going to help most of you guys get through the assignments, questions. So, um, where's the textbook mm -hmm, that yes. we could find? Uh, the textbook, uh, it's already uh, in on Achieve. So on Achieve, there is an e-textbook that you can actually get access uh, to, the, all, to all the reading materials. So I'm gonna go over that uh, in maybe a, a few more minutes after we, we finish the Canvas tour, right? But that's a good question. So I will keep that in mind. I will go over the textbook uh, with you guys. So uh, Mariana also had a question. So for next week, uh, will we discuss questions that we have uh, uh, pertaining to chapter ones uh, during office hour? Or will we be discussing questions for chapter two? So that's a good question. Um, so Mariana, uh, I think next Tuesday, uh, next Wednesday, um, if you are joining my office hour, that will be a section for you to ask questions about uh, chapter one still. The reason is because um, the first assignment for chapter one, it's not due until I think January 31st or 30th. So it's two weeks from now. So this week, it's basically introductions, right? I will ex explore some of the materials in chapter one for you guys. And you have the whole week uh, just to play around with the, uh, 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 the e-textbook or the online digital solutions platform, right? To see the assignments, explore a little bit out there. Um, and next week you can start working on the first assignment. And you, if you have any question, you can ask me during the office hour. And I, I do have uh, two different office hour for uh, offer for, for students to join. So you don't have to worry about, um, you, you only have that one hour time. Okay, so I, I'm gonna uh, uh, go over uh, what are the schedules um, I have offered for you guys. So yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, after um, uh, uh, next week, well, the, the following week, you will be asking questions about chapter two. Uh, that's how we plan it out. Um, so yeah, hopefully people will keep up on the schedule, but it's okay if you wanna actually uh, ask questions about chapter one in the later week. Uh, because I can extend your, uh, your assignment at any time, okay? If you need extension, if you need more time to work on any assignments, all you need to do is just to uh, shoot me a message and let me know. And I can adjust any assignment date for all of you, all of you, any one of you, okay? So don't worry about the, the pace of the class. I just want to make sure I have everyone doing the work. So I have the assessments to give you the grades. So um, Jose is also having a questions there. So do we need to buy the textbook? So that's a good question too. So I will step into that in just a few minutes, but my general uh, answer to that is yes, but not exactly a textbook, but you have to buy the access code to achieve uh, online digital solutions. So that's the platform where you are going to get all the assessment. That means well assignments and quizzes done and as well as doing the e-textbook reading uh, on there. So I will go over that in just a few minutes, but that's a good question. Yes, uh, unfortunately, you still need to buy something for this class. So Jane also asking a question. I was your student last semester. Is it going to be the same as before? Um, so Jane, um, unfortunately, uh, the, the, the SS code this time uh, has to be purchased by students. Um, because last semester, what happened was uh, the dean um, actually covering the cost 
uh, because uh, there are some uh, concern um, uh, from the department uh, about the, 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 the remote learning, right? Uh, but this semester, unfortunately, the dean is not going to cover, uh, department is not going to cover the course, so a student has to uh, uh, pay for this um, uh, achieve uh, SS code. And I will go over uh, how you're going to get uh, the SS code in, in uh, just a few minutes, too. So those are good questions. Thank you for, for asking them. Okay, so before we are uh, uh, leaving uh, Canvas, um, so I am going to uh, basically show you one more thing here. So there is a function called discussions. It's not like, well, I really want to uh, 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 this motivate you guys to do the discussions in this class. I do want to motivate you guys to do, but every semester I do, um, I failed. <laughs> So basically, I tell my students, right? Hey, you know what? Be active, right? So interact with your friends here. Uh, but um, after the first two weeks, um, people get excited and then they get uh, very uh, uh, um, enthusiastic in the first two weeks. And then, well, the third week uh, and on, they die down. Right? Uh, but anyway, so um, I do want to make sure that um, I pass on this message to you guys. If you guys have any questions about chapter assignments or the course material or anything related to the chapter, feel free to post your questions on this discussions sections. Um, so I can answer them if I see them. Uh, if you do not get an answer from me, I am hoping other students can also help answering your questions in this class. Right, so that's basically another function. So I believe it's, it's, it's quite useful, but I don't know if, if you are feeling comfortable to, to use it, okay? All right, so um, at this point, I would like to uh, pause the recording just for a few minutes. Again, I don't know uh, how that lady uh, 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 scares you, but every time I hear it, I, it, it scares me a little bit there. All right, so here we go. So this is the course service that I told you about, right? Remember, uh, if you go uh, under announcements, um, if you open the welcome message, uh, the syllabus is basically just right underneath my uh, videos um, and you can just click on it and download it. Uh, you can feel free to keep a copy in your computer or if you want, um, you can actually always go back um, to the Canvas course to, to look at it. So here we have uh, basically um, the, uh, the regular stuff, right? So we have the course information. Uh, we know uh, this class is scheduled for every Wednesday, 6 to 10. Uh, I mean, 6, 10 to 9 o'clock, uh, but we are no longer uh, fixed with that time because I provide you guys with a uh, asynchronous uh, learning uh, experience here. Uh, here's a final schedule for this class, which is May 26 on Wednesday, which is the last day of the final exam, but it doesn't really matter to us because we do not have final exam in this class. And I am going to explain uh, what are the things that we count in this class. Uh, here, you will see my uh, contact information, right? uh, my name, my email address, and as well as our office hour. I'm going to post the office hour information on Canvas announcements um, uh, later this week, um, so you guys do not need to panic. I will make sure all this information that you need will be on Canvas announcements for sure. If something that I missed posting there, make sure you, you message me, right? Let me know, hey, Norman, I think I need that information on Canvas and I will post them on, on, on the announcements for you guys. So we have two office hours that I offer you guys, Wednesday from eight to nine and Saturday from 11 to 12. So some of you guys might ask the question, hey, Norman, how come it's so weird? You are putting a Saturday there. The reason why I'm doing a Saturday uh, hour, it's because um, for, especially for you guys who are taking a night class, um, I believe you take a night class for reasons, right? Either you have a regular job uh, on, on the daytime or you have a very busy schedule uh, in the morning, right? Or maybe you are packed with uh, different classes, right? In the morning. So in order to provide more flexibility to students uh, in the future, I would like to uh, basically give you guys um, a, a special date, right? But to be honest, I do not want to work on Saturday myself, but 
um, I think um, I get a lot of the students saying that, well, uh, the weekend, it's probably a better time for them to ask questions because they, are, they have a very full pack of schedule on the weekday. They have to work, they have to take care of the family, they, have, they don't have time at night, right? So um, maybe the Saturday schedule will help some of you guys. Uh, I am not sure, but if, if it's not a good time, uh, we can discuss and trying to reschedule a different hour, official hour for our, um, for our office hour uh, later in the semester, right? But for now, I'm just setting two hours right here, which is official time. I will be there for sure. Again, um, except for these two hours, I am also allowing students to schedule with me by appointment. So what it means is you, if you have any question to ask later, you can just shoot me an email and say, hey, Norman, um, do you have time this week, maybe on Wednesday and Thursday? Because I am available on, on Wednesday, Thursday, right? So uh, from maybe two o'clock to three o'clock. If you shoot me an email and give me a, 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 a question, right? Uh, when you wanna schedule a time, I am going to try my best to accommodate. I, uh, if I cannot meet your uh, scheduled time, I will give you a list of time uh, for you to uh, uh, ask questions uh, on Zoom during those times. And I will set up Zoom meeting for you, uh, for, uh, for you guys uh, uh, for that particular appointment. So instead of having a three hour uh, sit in online lecture, right? <laughs> Um, I am actually doing a lot more additional work for you guys. I have two hours that I have to be there right, to answer questions from students. And I am actually having at least, I can tell you for sure, last semester, I am almost working 10 additional more hours just to meet with students because students do not want to join the lecture meeting that I schedule for the class. They literally, basically 10 uh, additional meeting I have to meet with students uh, every week. Um, so I am literally being uh, uh, stretched so much more uh, than what I should do in this course. I am only get paid for one hour of office hour in each week during the semester. And I am doing 10 times more than what I'm supposed to do. So therefore, um, I just wanna let you guys know I'm not doing less by putting those online lecture uh, on Canvas. I am actually doing additional work here for you guys. Um, and I'm just hoping that this will help really the student in needs uh, for the, for, uh, from, from me, right? The helps from me. All right, so well, uh, that's basically the office hour, right? We will, uh, if you do have questions, of course, uh, feel free to ask later. We have the textbook that we adopt, which is uh, Microeconomics, Principle of the Changing World. Uh, written by Eric Chang, uh, fifth editions. Um, you do not need to purchase a textbook uh, for this class. And the reason is because we also adapt to this online supplement, which is called Achieve. So uh, Achieve is a online digital solutions offered by the publishers um, uh, of the book, uh, which is Macmillan's. Um, they are um, uh, basically putting everything into one place, right? So uh, all the assignment quizzes, right, and activity, and also e-textbook in one place so students can get easy access to all this material uh, online and as well as the instructor can also get a, uh, a, a easier way to assess students. Um, I can see all the grades in one place, right? So 100% of the grades are coming from this Achieve platform. So what it means is if you are trying to pass this class, unfortunately, you cannot uh, without purchasing Achieve you must purchase Achieve to, um, to get everything done in this class, right? Uh, but th there will be some students asking questions uh, about like uh, uh, the free trial periods later, but I I'll explain a little bit more. Here is the breakdown. So basically on Achieve, you will get the chapter assignment. So every chapter I have an assignment for you guys to do, and the assignment is come with uh, different types of questions. Sometimes it could be like a drag and drop question. Sometimes it could be like a graphing questions where you have to move the line. Sometimes it could be um, a, a calculation question. You have to enter a number and stuff like that. So uh, chapter assignment is going to account 40% of your grade. There are, there, there are also um, chapter quizzes. So every chapter, I also design a quiz for you guys. Um, the difference between assignment and quizzes is basically just the time given for you to complete 
uh, that particular uh, 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 work. Assignment, you can try multiple answer, right? Uh, you, you, you get it wrong one time, you can redo it. Uh, you will get a little bit of a penalty. So it's not gonna affect your grade that much. So you, it's basically just a chance for you to practice those questions. A quiz, it's a scheduled time quiz. So what it means is once you started it, it will give you a fixed time to complete uh, 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 a certain number of questions. So uh, it, you will face a co time constraint as well as also you only have one chance to answer every question. So you submit all the questions at one time and you will get a grade for the quiz. So therefore, um, doing the assignment is going to help you to practice the questions for during the quiz. So it's kind of like progressing, right? So the quiz is the final assessment to test, to test you how well you understand the chapter material. The assignment, it's basically for you to practice. So that also 40% uh, of your final grade in this course. And there is also an achieve um, video activity. And this is basically a fun part uh, that you can do. Uh, so there will be like a multiple questions, like three to four questions each chapter where you will have to watch a little video and then you will give in the questions to answer. Um, so it's, it's a very, very intuitive way for a student to uh, learn by doing, right? So the video activity, it's a very, very useful tool for you guys to master the materials. And it's fun to do, and you will never get it wrong if you watch the video and, and follow the steps. So uh, we will uh, sh uh, show you some of these uh, uh, questions uh, later when we get to the uh, achieve registrations. So those are the three things that you are going to uh, count on uh, in this course, right? So 40%, 40%, 20% that adds to 100% in this class. And here's the letter grades that uh, associate with the uh, percentage points earned uh, from this uh, materials here, right? So if you get uh, 89 or above, uh, then you get an A in this class, 79 uh, to 89, that would be a B and so on and on. Uh, we don't have plus and minus uh, uh, grading system in CCSF, right? So it's only just the letter by itself. Uh, and um, just a little uh, uh, exciting news for you guys. Hopefully it's an exciting news. Um, last semester, I have students who are taking my uh, micro and macro classes. Um, I think about 60% of the students in my class actually got an A. Okay, hopefully this is exciting news. Uh, about 30% of the class actually get a B. The rest of the 10%, um, they are either, most of them actually getting a C to pass the class. And I only have a very, very few students from the class who are actually failing the class, not getting a, a C, right? So um, hopefully this is the exciting news uh, because the design of this class, it's very, very straightforward. We just want to make sure students doing all the assessments online and make sure they are, they're showing the instructor that they understand how to solve those problems uh, for uh, the chapter that we taught uh, in this semester. So um, if you wonder, hey, Norman, do I have to take a final exam in this class? No, no final exam. Hey, Norman, do we have like some sort of a, a surprise, right? Uh, quizzes or, 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 or in-class uh, secret quiz? Uh, no, nothing like that. Everything is very straightforward. You do the activity, you learn something, and then you do the assignment, you practice it, and then you do the quiz to pass the final assessment for that chapter. And then you're done with that chapter, and then you can move on to the next chapter. So it's, it's very, very straightforward. It's very progressive and, and it's very, very uh, uh, transparent on how we are grading uh, students in this course. And I think most of the students adopt pretty well last semester. And I'm hoping that could be your case too. Um, so keep it up, right? So any questions you ask me, I am more than happy to show you the solutions and step-by-step -step and how to do those problems um, uh, either on Zoom or maybe by email. All right, so if we keep scoring down, well, all of this, to be honest, I don't think uh, you have to, to pay too much attention to them because uh, they are not, uh, most of them doesn't really relate to the, uh, to the online learning uh, environments. They are basically the rules uh, for most of the in-class, face-to-face environments. So it, the, the last thing that I wanna show you on syllabus is this course schedule right here. 
So this is actually quite important for you guys because um, this course schedule actually lay out um, uh, like the overall uh, um, progress of the class, right? So we are in week one and then we are going to do a little chapter one presentation today. And next week we are going to uh, uh, we are going to expect students to watch the video for um, uh, chapter two uh, about uh, the first economic model, the production possibility frontier model, to learn about trade-offs and and why uh, trading makes sense. And then the week number three and four, it's going to be the supply demand model, and then so on. Well, on the week mark, it actually tells you when is the last day to drop the class with LW. Uh, when is the last day to change credit, no credit? When is the last day to withdraw from the class, right? So those are the important dates. And uh, this is the uh, kind of like a, a layout of how the class will progress. However, again, let me remind you, we do not have a definite deadline for every single chapter assignments or activities in this class. I put those deadlines uh, or due dates uh, for the assignment on Achieve only because I want to remind you we have this and this and that that, have, that we plan to be done okay, in that particular week. However, for some other reasons, like for example, if, if you have like a family emergency or you got into accident or you got uh, COVID-19 right, touch wood uh, saying, uh, then well, you can take your time. You can postpone, you can let me know, hey, you know what? I cannot finish this assignment. Can you give me a, 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 a one more week? And I am more than happy to. I am more than happy to extend any work in this semester for you in order for you to get the maximum grade uh, in this class. So Dono, I'm, I'm gonna answer your question. Does Achieve SS uh, uh, have ebook SS uh, or do we purchase an ebook separately? So Dono, that's a good question. So uh, the price already included ebook. And Jory, thank you for uh, answering that question for me too. Uh, so yes, the price that you pay for Achieve SS code, it's already including the e-textbook. So you do not need to purchase anything uh, for this class uh, or uh, any additional. Achieve is the only one thing you have to purchase uh, uh, for, to get access to everything in this class. Nothing else you have to purchase. And um, when you are trying to um, register the product and, and planning on making purchase, uh, please pause that for a while because I have some very important uh, update for, for the class as well. So um, uh, just wait a little bit if you are, are, are going through the registration process. Right? I, I will be there in just a minute. So again, um, we, we, we have a very nice schedule right here planned out and I have explained the, the, how the course is being um, uh, uh, structured. I'm going to uh, take a pause of the video recording now. So here, we are on the Achieve website and uh, we are going to go through the registration process together. So all you need to do is to basically click on this lower uh, left-hand corner button it says, I need to enroll in a course. Once you click on this button, it's going to pop up this window that asking you to enter a course ID. So what you need to do, it's very simple. You go back to the Canvas page, Announcements, and you find this course code right here, which is CMS9DP. This is the code that specifically linked to our course. So I'm gonna copy this uh, code right here and go back to my Macmillan page and paste it right here. So again, you can either type it or copy and paste. CMS9DP. And I'm going to press enter. Once you press enter, it will bring you to this second page. Now, this is very, very critical for everyone here. So please pay attention to this. So once you are in this page, what happened is you have multiple um, um, uh, options. So either you can purchase the Achieve SS code right now. That means you have to pay money immediately to get access to the material. Or you can actually start your grace period 
which is the trial periods, the first two weeks of trial periods where you can uh, actually use this uh, Achieve uh, platform for free. You do not need to pay any money upfront. And this is the options I want you guys to click on. I do not want anyone to pay anything to this evil company. Okay, well, I, even though I say it's evil company, but to be honest, well, they're they are actually private company. So, well, we know, well, they have to make money because otherwise, well, they cannot pay the loyalty free to the, to the publisher, uh, to the writers and the writer do not have money to write another new book, right? Yeah, what, whatever that is. But obviously they are still evil, right? Any private company, it's evil. Um, so, but I do not want any of you pay any money upfront, at least for the first two weeks of the class. Okay, so if you are planning on starting the Achieve platform today, I would like you guys to click on this button, start a grace period. Well, there is an additional option here that actually asks you to enter the SS code. And I assume that you do not uh, have any SS code yet and you haven't purchased SS code from the CCSF bookstore or anywhere yet. So I do not, um, uh, uh, suggest you guys um, to touch uh, this option here. So if I'm going to click on this start a grace period button, I click on it and it will bring you to the next page and say, hey, you are ready to enroll and you will have 14 days period to begin uh, once you finish your enrollment, right? So you can actually now use the system for free uh, in the first 14 days. So you click on this term and conditions, and then you sign in to achieve if you already have an account, or you can click on this create an account. So before we move on, I would like to answer a private message right here. So someone said um, uh, um, they already rent a book uh, and the CCSF bookstore already give you a code. So can, uh, can I use it, right? So my answer to that question is, there is no SS code that you can rent from anywhere. The SS code can only work for a particular course at a particular time. So what it means is, if you are actually getting a code from a bookstore and bookstore is renting you a book with a SS code, what happened is most likely that code it's only for a particular semester in the past and it cannot be reused anymore. But of course, I'm not saying this 100% uh, uh, sure. You can definitely try to enter the code and try out the code to see if it give you the, uh, grant you the access to the course. But I am mostly certain that is not the code for activations uh, to this achieve. Um, so, yeah, so I guess it's only the uh, codes for you to read uh, the ebooks uh, from the CCSF library database. Okay, so um, Serena also had a question. Uh, does Achieve have app I can use download on the phone and iPad? So yes, um, I think I th I think they do not have an app but they do have a mobile uh, web uh, layout. So what it means if, if you are using your phone or your iPad um, loading the page, um, everything, uh, the layout of the web page is going to adjust to your mobile phone size and your, uh, uh, your uh, handheld size. Uh, but I don't think Achieve has a particular app uh, that you can download from the app store yet. I don't think they developed that product. Uh, uh, for uh, for that purpose. Uh, but I will double check on that. Um, if they do, then I, I will definitely uh, uh, let you guys know. So again, I assume most of you guys are first time using Achieve, except um, there are some students told me that um, uh, you have taken my class before. Uh, you can try to sign in with your, uh, with your account um, uh, uh, to this Achieve course. Um, I do not know if you still get the 14 days grace period. I assume so, but if you don't, don't worry. Well, uh, create a new account, right? Again, well, using a different email address, right? Doesn't really matter to me. 
Uh, Nika also has a question. I was able to download an app called Bookshelf where you can access the book. Uh, Nika, yes, you can access the book on Bookshelves, uh, but unfortunately you cannot get access to Achieve. Achieve is where you are going to do your assignments. Um, so, uh, and also reading a book. So um, if you want to read the book on Bookshelves, uh, make sure you are not paying additional, first of all, because there is already an ebook on Achieve, okay? Inside Achieve, there is already an ebook that you can read. So if you are reading uh, uh, other e-textbooks uh, on bookshelves, as particularly for my class, make sure you don't pay anything, right? I don't want anyone to pay any additionals uh, in this course, yes. All right, so again, well, I assume uh, most of you guys the first time using Achieve. So what you can do, it's basically create an account here, clicking on this button and it will bring you to this create account page. And all you need to do, it's very simple, right? So you enter your name and then you enter your email address, right? Uh, uh, something like this, right? So I don't mind to, ex uh, uh, to uh, give out my email address here, right? So everyone should know. And then you create your uh, password, which is something uh, I really hate, right? So it has to be eight character to 72 character, uppercase, lowercase, number, and special character, right? So it's gonna drive me crazy. Um, so you think of something that works for you. Uh, confirm your password here, and then you can uh, search your institutions. So you can actually type City College of San Francisco, and it should pop up on the first ones right here and also setting your security questions um, so that you can actually log back in just in case if you forget your password. And then uh, uh, click on, uh, uh, of course, you don't wanna receive anything from millions, but then uh, you have to agree, uh, uh, you, know, you have to click on the agreements, right? To the terms and use, um, and then you can actually create your account. Well, because I still have some uh, of this information been uh, uh, enter, right? So I cannot click on create account. But once you once you uh, answer all these questions, right, on the form, and you should be able to uh, create your account successfully. So uh, once you create your account, and let me go back to the front page right here, it should bring you back to the very, very first page right here. And what you need to do after creating account and joining the class is to sign in with your account. So it will ask you to uh, enter your email address. And I'm gonna enter my account. Let's see. And I'm gonna log into my account. And here you are going to see um, only one class available. Uh, if you're taking uh, only one class with Achieve, right? It should show you only just one class. So you should be able to find Econ 3, Principles of Microeconomics, Spring 2021, Econ 3, Session 501, this course right here. And if you click on this course, it will bring you directly to the class. And this is how it looks like on your side. Right? It should look pretty similar. Uh, I, I hope it's similar, but um, uh, because I can only see the instructor view, I don't know uh, how the student views looks like. Uh, but anyway, so it should be very similar uh, to, to on your side. So let me very briefly go over. There are only two things that you have to know on Achieve. Number one, where you identify your assignments, right? Because that is the most important thing for you guys to do uh, for the upcoming weeks. So where are you gonna find your assignments? Well, since we do not have anything due for this week and for next week, and therefore there is nothing showing up here and there is no past assignment either. So if you go down, you can actually see there are some future assignments right here, right? So chapter one assignments and chapter two assignment and activities. So what you need to do, it's very simple. If you wanna see all the assignment in the future, you can click on this button right here called view it all. So if I click on this and I am going to see all the assignment in one place by week. So I have week two, which is uh, uh, the due date for this assignment. It's set on January 31st, which is uh, two Sunday from now. 
And that's basically the video activity for chapter one and also the homework assignment for chapter one. Week number three, I have February 7, uh, we have uh, the deal uh, for this two activity here, the video activity for chapter two and also the uh, homework assignment for chapter two. So if I click on this assignment right here, um, of course the, the, uh, the setup of this, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. And when you click on it, it's probably going to show you some of these questions right here. So for instance, you might actually see this uh, questions right here. Right? So which is not an example of a behavior exhibit in a market economy, right? And um, obviously uh, you can try to uh, do this uh, 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 on your own, right? So maybe uh, if you think this is the correct answer, you can check your answer. If you didn't get a correct answer, don't worry. This is the good part about uh, the achieve assignment. If you don't get it right on the first time, you can try it again. So what happened is if you get the answer wrong in the first trial, you will get some percentage point deducted for this particular questions. Well, this is basically the way how we prevent students to just randomly trying out the answer, right? Uh, but of course, um, uh, for this particular multiple choice question, you are not going to um, uh, give up a lot of points uh, to try out all the answer. But in other forms of questions like this one, right? You want to actually um, uh, drag and drop answer, right? So for example, uh, 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 we should actually put things in order, right? So which one is market oriented, which one is planted economy, and then you have to actually drag them one by one and order them uh, which one is closer to the market oriented activity and which one is closer to the planned economy activities. Well, in this case, if you are trying to randomly try out different answer, it's probably gonna cost you a lot of points because you might not be able to find the correct combinations easily by randomly try out the answer. So if you check the answer, well, it will throw you an uh, incorrect answer. Uh, most of the time, uh, you will get a uh, response, right? You will have a feedback, right? So you will actually get some feedback. Uh, maybe I, I don't know how, how it, yeah. So uh, there might be some feedback right here. So I do not uh, know on my side, it doesn't show, but on your side, it should show you um, how you are going to get this answer uh, right or check which sections of the textbook uh, for the try, uh, for these questions. So again, um, that's basically how you are going to do your um, uh, uh, assignments right, uh, on Achieve. Uh, so let me just uh, close this very quickly. So if you go back um, here to the main page, right, to the future assignment page, yeah, loading slowly. You can also click on the video activity and uh, just take a look at some of these questions here, right? So uh, in chapter two, there is only one questions and, oh, actually multiple questions. And you have um, uh, some of these questions that you can actually easily answer. Um, so what you need to do is, uh, oops. So you can actually click on some of these questions. So there is a video, which is uh, the writer of this book, Eric Chan. Uh, he is going to explain to you how to answer that particular questions. And after watching the video, um, you will be answering those questions based on uh, what uh, Eric Chan told you right in this video. And most of the time you should actually get uh, the correct answer if you watch uh, the video carefully, right? So it, it's basically the way how we interact uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the course materials uh, written by the author. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, uh, those are very good uh, resources to study uh, the materials uh, for the chapter and going over some calculations sometime too. Right? It will teach you some calculations uh, problems. Now, if you scroll down to the very, very bottom of this future assignment, I am going to show you, well, all these quizzes, right, for each chapter. So. The quizzes are basically uh, scheduled by the end of the semester. As you can see, they are all due on May 23rd. However, you can get started and or if you are confident, you can actually finish all the quizzes today if you want. 
right? You can finish all of them today if you are confident to do to finish them all today. So there is no definite deadlines or scheduled or planned scheduled uh, for these quizzes. It's basically the flexibility I provide you guys to plan out your semester. You can try to do one quiz at a, in a week, or you can plan maybe uh, uh, in week number three, I want to do uh, uh, quiz number one to three. Or you can try to do maybe two quizzes uh, in a bi-weekly schedule. It doesn't really matter, okay? You can plan ahead of the time and decide how you want to complete these quizzes. However, one thing I would like to warn you guys, right? So um, all the quizzes are timed. Uh, they are not um, uh, like your assignment. You have unlimited time. So if you click on uh, chapter one quiz, it will ask you, do you want to start the quiz? And then you will uh, be given the time uh, of two hour, 30 minutes. I believe that's the time I set for each quiz to answer a specific number of questions. Well, in chapter one, there are only 18 questions that you have to answer, okay? Each chapter will have different number of questions, but the time will be the same. Uh, depends on the difficulties of the chapter, right? And also uh, the, the, the complexity of the materials. But um, each chapter will give you two hour, 30 minutes of fixed time window once you get started. You cannot stop the quiz once you start the quiz, okay? So you cannot stop it, okay? You, once you click start and you cannot stop the call. So therefore you have to plan your schedule ahead. Um, make sure you are in a safe place, right? To do your quiz. Uh, but to be honest, well, even though I call this quiz or, and, and a final assessments for the chapter, uh, most of the people in my class uh, last, last semester uh, can actually get uh, up to 80 to 90% of the grades uh, within one hour to one hour, 30 minutes on average time to complete each quiz. So um, I, I don't know how well you guys are prepared for doing these quizzes, but um, definitely it's not something that is difficult and challenging if you complete your assignments before you jumping into these quizzes. They should be very similar questions um, uh, that you are answering uh, in your assignments, okay? So I put this quizzes at the end so that you guys can schedule your time to do it. However, there, it come with a trade-off. Uh, last semester, what happened was some of the students actually told me, what, we do have quizzes for the chapter? I never learned that, right, from, from you, Norman. You never told me that uh, there are quizzes. And therefore, I want to actually uh, reinforce this uh, announcement here to you guys, especially we are recording now. Um, so there are quizzes for each chapter. It's just that I am making this due date by the end of the semester. It doesn't mean that you have to do it by the end of the semester. You can do it any time, at any time you want. If you want to do them all in week one, that's totally okay. But don't forget about those quizzes and come in to me with surprise and say, you never tell me there are quizzes, okay? So I just want to make sure the message is, is, is clearly passing on to you guys. So um, if you do have any questions in the future, um, you can feel free to let me know. All right, so those are the three types of assessments that you will get 100% of the grade in this class. So I'm hoping uh, they are not difficult to, uh, to read uh, and, and find. Uh, you can get a head start. You can actually go to the future assignment to do more uh, than what is being scheduled to you uh, by the schedule. Um, so um, just make sure you, you plan your head uh, ahead uh, uh, for, for this course. So you don't uh, uh, put all your work uh, by, by the end of the semester, right? The last two weeks of the semester. Um, so that's, uh, that could be challenging, right? So the second thing that you have to know about Achieve is you're already getting the e-textbook uh, options right here. So if you go to the bar on the left-hand side, right, like I, I'm actually just pointing the cruiser on the left-hand side, you can see there is an option called ebook. So you click on this ebook, it will bring you to the e-textbook page where you can actually read the chapter by sections. So for example, if I click on chapter one, 
and I want to break it down to uh, different sections to read the book, I can actually read the first sections of the chapter one textbook. So let me just uh, clear this. And this is exactly how the textbook looks like physically. Okay, so this layout right here, it's basically how the textbook is being printed out uh, physically. And you can actually read it by sections and you can uh, also uh, uh, choose different sections to read, right? You can break it down and you can take notes, right? You can actually do notebooks. You can take notes uh, about the, the topics and also you can pick different pages to read, let's say 36 page. And it will bring you to the 36 page uh, in the physical textbook. And that's basically the contents uh, for that particular page. So either one way or the other, um, I think this uh, e-textbook, it's actually quite easy to navigate uh, and it's not difficult to, to read. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty clean uh, designed um, uh, layouts. Um, if, but uh, of course, if you are reading this uh, in on your tablets or maybe on your phone, it will become uh, a little bit more uh, squeeze, right? And difficult to read. But uh, if you're reading it uh, from a computer, that should not be a problem for you. All right, so those are the two main features, right? Doing the assignments and doing your e-textbook reading. Uh, those are the two things that you are paying for in this class. And unfortunately, um, I, um, uh, because we are doing the remote learning, I am hoping I do not ask anyone to pay for this uh, material. But unfortunately, because well, we have this massive work that we have to do online uh, for our students and for our school, um, so we have to find some alternative uh, to make the work uh, physically possible, right? So that's basically the reason why um, I, I feel bad um, uh, that I do not have any negotiation power uh, to the publishers to, to lower the, the, the price for you guys, which I already did. Um, and I'm going to explain to you what, how much you're going to pay for this product. But for now, um, any questions about Achieve? Let me pause the, uh, let me pause the uh, uh, video now. Again, um, welcome back um, to this uh, lecture for chapter one. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free um, to leave it on the chat box. Um, if you want to ask uh, by your voice, right? you want to actually um, unmute yourself to ask questions, but you don't want to uh, be recorded, uh, make sure you send a message on the chat box and say, um, uh, I want to ask a question. Can you pause a recording now? Um, and I will be uh, pausing the recording and um, uh, let you guys ask uh, questions in this class. So um, again, well, privacy, it's very important. So you don't want to be uh, 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 shocked right, by hearing your voice in, in any of those recorded videos in the future. All right, so um, again, uh, in this presentation, um, it has um, all the uh, information I just presented to the class, right? It has my name, it has my contact, um, ccsf.edu. Um, it has my office, which we don't use anymore because the campus is closed. And there are office hours that I posted on the syllabus you can refer to. Uh, we talk about the uh, textbook that we adopted uh, for this class. I think I have to update a little bit. It's probably the fifth edition now. So it's microeconomics uh, written by Eric Chan. And we are using the Achieve platform that I just showed you um, earlier um, uh, 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 in the course, uh, in the first sections. Um, we also have uh, all the class information, such as uh, the course syllabus, um, the, the lecture videos for each chapters, and also the PowerPoint slides where you can download from Canvas. And here we have um, achieved already, including the e-textbook, which I show you and demonstrated uh, on uh, my presentations earlier. So you can definitely um, try to explore a little bit uh, of the functions on achieve. The evaluations of the course, it's pretty simple. So we have the online chapter assignments, which is 40% of the grade, and online quizzes, which is 40% of the grade, and uh, the video activity, which is 20% uh, of the final grades. So uh, it's pretty straightforward and easy um, to understand. Um, I know there are some students who might actually want to ask questions like, um, oh, do we get extra credit right, for the class? Um, I usually do not offer extra credit, uh, but um, our department actually um, 
encourage uh, the instructor to to seek for um, um, students' opinion on this online remote teaching um, methods. So um, maybe in in this semester, I will be uh, giving you guys two to three surveys. Um, uh, since I'm asking you guys to do some additional work for the class. So um, for those surveys, I might actually offer you guys some um, additional extra credit points um, to add to your final grade. Uh, but again, well, do, do not misinterpret. Um, well, extra credit is not like 100% of the final grade, okay? So extra credit might only worth maybe 2% or maybe 3% max um, to your final grades. Um, it might actually help uh, bumping your grade from a B to an A, but it's not going to bump your grade from C to an A or maybe from F to a C. Um, so um, I'm hoping I'm not giving you some uh, missing information here. Um, so um, I, I just want to be clear, extra credit is still not going to be a whole lot, but it might help to bump your grades uh, up a level. So uh, see for those opportunity, um, uh, pay attention to the announcements under con uh, Canvas. Um, I will also be sending out email if I do offer some extra credit opportunity by uh, doing the surveys later. And about this class, um, uh, I think uh, most of you guys have already experienced uh, the online um, learning uh, uh, course from uh, CCSF last semester. Um, I think your instructor also reminds you, uh, my course is going to be synchronous or asynchronous, right? So I just want to be clarified. Um, uh, most of the students actually thought synchronous basically means um, a face-to-face, -face, right? A fixed time. Um, and asynchronous basically means, well, do not have a timeline, right? Which um, very close, but then it could be very easily uh, misunderstood. So I just want to uh, remind students in this class, um, our course, it's actually designed to have a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous uh, teaching styles um, in one course. And sometimes we actually call this a bichronous, right? Uh, uh, both mixture, right? So uh, we have the synchronous material, uh, which is the uh, chapter assignments, the chapter activities, so those are the scheduled um, uh, engaging activity that you have to do in a given time and you, you will get feedback uh, on, on achieve whether you get it right or wrong, right? Before a certain due date. So you have to, uh, specific given time periods to work on it. However, uh, there is also a asynchronous uh, part of the learning uh, process in this course. So for example, um, the recorded lecture videos that I post on Canvas, it's an asynchronous one. You do not need to have a specific time to go on live to watch me talking about the chapter materials because you are already given those video uh, uh, to plan out your time to go over it, uh, as well as for the e-textbook, right? So you're given those material asynchronously. You do not have to be specific Wednesday nights from six to nine, you have to be here. So therefore, there is a mixture of the two types of learning methods in this course. And I'm hoping because we are mixing the two, it will make it a little bit easier for students to adjust the learning um, or to, to enjoy the learning uh, in this spring semester. Well, one reason why I'm actually doing the pre-record uh, lecture, um, I'm hoping this statistic here, it's not gonna shock you um, uh, too much. So this is what happened to my, um, to my class attendance in the four semester 2020, which is last semester. So we have uh, uh, the attendance by the week, as you can see, uh, starting in week one, um, I have about 126 students actually attended my first lecture meeting in week number one. In week number two, I have a very similar number, maybe 118. And then week number three, I still have over 100. But as you can see, um, starting week number four and five and six, and later on, well, we are actually have less than one third of the students stay in the course to attend my class. So um, I think many of you guys actually um, 
missing so much about the the face to face class, and you you want to ask uh, your instructor questions when he or she is presenting the material in the class, which I do agree, and I really really do want to do that too for you guys. But unfortunately, when I'm looking at this statistic, when I'm looking at this data, I cannot convince myself to continue to do the synchronous uh, meeting every week. The reason is because it doesn't make sense to me to be there when I only face less than one fifth of the class every single week. Students literally took advantage of the recording of the class. So they will basically just say, hey, you know what, Norman is going to record the, video, uh, the lecture anyway, so I don't have to attend. And as a result of that, I have less than one fifth of the class actually come to my lecture after week number four. And that is a very, very significant um, uh, reductions right, of attendance uh, for my classes. Um, the reason why, and some students actually suggest, hey, Norman, why don't you just not record the, 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 the video, right? And then let the students uh, suffer. Unfortunately, we are given the instructions by the department and also the college. We must record our lecture video in order to provide accessibility to our students in different formats. And therefore, we have to do the recording for our students. And as a result of that, well, we see a significant drop in attendance. And therefore, this semester, I make a change. I decided to drop all this face-to-face, -face, not face-to-face, -face, but well, a synchronous meeting uh, every week. Instead, um, I actually make this a office hour for you guys to ask questions if you really want to talk to me, right? I think it makes more sense and it make it a little bit more efficient use of my time. So I'm hoping for your understanding. I am not trying to do this because I can save time. I literally not saving time. And I am literally doing more for you guys because I have to post those video. I have to pre-record it, I have to design the course and structure the way how you guys can actually progress beforehand. And those are the time I put in so much more than what I'm teaching in the class. So as I mentioned before, instead of having the course meeting, well, I offer office hour. So there are two dates that I will definitely be on the Zoom meeting, which is Wednesday from eight o'clock to nine o'clock for this class. And also Saturday from 11 to 12 p.m. Um, that's the additional hour that I provide on the different dates, just to make sure people are um, given an alternative, right? To talk to me, um, not only just on the weekday as well as I also meeting student by appointments. So if you have any questions you wanna ask about the class, feel free to schedule a time with me and I will be uh, trying my best to adopt uh, your, your schedules. Well, in order to um, having a question answer, I also provide you the uh, other uh, uh, medias right here. So either you can email me the questions for example, you can actually send me an email saying that, hey, Norman, I'm coming from the micro class and I do not know how to do chapter two, question number three. Can you go over that uh, in the email for me? And I am going to show you the step-by-step -step, uh, 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 solutions of those uh, problems if you ask me by email. And also you can send me a message on Canvas inbox, same. You ask me which questions from each chapter and then I will try to uh, help guide you through the solutions. And um, also there is a discussion uh, uh, forum that I create on Canvas uh, that you can also use and um, uh, have uh, the community to, uh, to help you out uh, as well. So I'm hoping uh, providing these uh, uh, other solutions um, to you, it will help uh, you better manage your time, right? And utilize your time uh, for this, uh, to, to get success in this class. So before we go, jump into the chapter one, um, just wanna make sure um, when we are, um, when I am presenting materials in the class, I, it's very often the case, uh, sometimes students will have a different expectations on how I am presenting the material and how I'm um, um, 
passing on the knowledge to the students, um, as well as, well, I might actually have expectations on how you guys will be learning the material. Um, I think it's very often um, that uh, we, we will come into conflict uh, of, on all these uh, misinterpretations of our expectations, right? So um, in order to, to reduce the level of uh, this um, uh, misunderstanding, I think it's, it makes sense whenever you have uh, some questions or whenever you have some idea how you want to change the class or to make adjustments of the class, um, you feel free to let me know. And I am, I'm, I am very, very happy and I'm very open to take those suggestions and make changes uh, if it's benefit the class. So make sure if you do have something that you have in mind, um, let me know and I am and I'm more than happy to make those changes for you guys. So generally speaking, why are we learning economics, right? So I think that's basically a, a very common questions that you might wanna ask as, as a student. Hey, I thought economics, it's all about money, 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 right? So wh why are we learning if I'm actually a major in arts, right? So to be honest, I, I, I don't think um, economic, it's about money, first of all. <laughs> and later we are gonna clarify what, what we are learning in economics. Uh, but generally speaking, I think um, economic, it's, it's, a, it's a study, it's a very general study for, uh, it's a beneficial to everyone in our society to understand how we are going to take actions and making decisions in our life. So for example, uh, we might actually uh, uh, want to understand why we are paying tax, right? Why we are investing money on, on maybe some sort of financial assets. Maybe we want to understand well, why sometimes we are voting on some public policy, right? So economic provides you a framework, a very good framework so that you can immediately have a good analysis on these issues in your life, right? As well as, I think um, it, it also helped us to make a better decisions in our life as individuals, right? So learning economic also help us to become more uh, systematically uh, understand why we are making certain decisions in a conditions, right? With some constraints, right? With some, with some given uh, conditions. So for example, like, well, why we are spending money now instead of saving it for later, right? Um, how we are doing our time management, how we're supposed to uh, spend our time, um, maybe doing exercise or to get healthy, or maybe um, how we are going to select uh, what types of food to consume, right? All of these are basically economic decisions that we made with the constraints uh, in our life and also conditions given. So economics is a very general topic. Uh, that help us to provide those framework, right? To build a framework to analyze everyday problems. So therefore, I think learning economics is not just good for your college life, right? To pass the, the, the G requirement. But um, I think if you take it seriously, it, it will also be a very, very good um, long-term uh, uh, knowledge to, to keep uh, in your life. Well, Let's think about why I'm actually, uh, I, I, why we love economics. So, well, to be honest, it's usually I love economics, but uh, to be honest, I think everyone loves economics in, at some level. So um, my, my uh, takeaway after I'm, I'm done with my graduate degree in, in economics is that um, I, th I see economic as a, as a framework to solve puzzle. Right, so I think everyone love to solve puzzle. I think everyone love to play games at least, right? So everyone knows what this game is, right, Zelda. So basically, if you think about your life, your life, it's basically a game at every single perspective, right? Just like playing a game in Zelda, right? So what, what's, what you do in Zelda, right? So you, you have all this weapon and then you're gonna kill some monster and then you are going to pick up some, uh, um, items, right? And then you're going to use it and then you, ha you have money. So it's almost like a life uh, situation. But you love playing those game and because you love making decisions. Economic is a study for you to understand when 
and how you're going to make the best decisions in your life. So therefore, if you really love playing games, to be honest, you love studying economics because economic, it's basically game in every perspective, in every perspective, everyday life, right? So what is actually economics all about? So the general definitions of economic, it's actually quite simple. The study of economic, it's basically a study for individual firms or society or any kind of agency in the society to make decisions to maximize their well-being, to maximize their needs, to maximize what they want, given a limitations in their life. So in a more official um, or in a more technical terms, we are basically saying that while we are given the scarce limited resources in our life, and we are trying to satisfy all this unlimited wants in our life. Right? So you think about yourself just like this old man, right? I want a fancy jacket, I want a sports car, I want some very nice food, I want a PlayStation 5, I want a glass of wine from Napa, right? You want everything in your life that you like. You want to actually make yourself the most happiest person in your life, in, in this world. But unfortunately, you're always bound by some limitations, right? For example, if you don't have that much time to earn money, you don't have that much knowledge to be smart, right? To, to outpace your, your competitor in the, in the job markets. Uh, you, you are limited to uh, the physical strength. You are limited to um, um, uh, what you can do with your, with your efforts, right? To, to certain things. So you are always bound by these limitations of resources, right? A scarce resources. Well, but given the fact that you know there is a limitations of resources you have on hand, you still want to get the most out of it. And that's basically the study of economics. We are providing a framework for people like us to understand how we can maximize what we want with the given uh, constraints of resources, right? And later we're gonna provide some uh, examples, right? Uh, in our models. So when we talk about limitations, right, we are actually, uh, we, we usually um, uh, relate to the term scarcity, right? What do we mean by scarcity? So scarcity, it's basically a conditions where we say there is a limited amount of resources available and there is a huge amount of needs of these resources in the world. Um, for instance, in economic, we always break down the scarce resources into these four category. And you can think about this yourself. Land, it's always scarce, right? So you have only very limited number of lands in the world, but everyone want to do something with the land. Either you built that building there, you want to actually have a farm there, you want to actually have a garden there, right? So the land, it's limited, but we want to do so much on our land. Well, land, it's a general work. Land in economic usually refer to any kinds of natural resources. So for example, natural gas, it's also what we call land, right? Clean air, it's also what we call land. Clean water source, it's also what we call land. So therefore, um, the, the term land, it's basically referred to natural resources in general. It's, it's not just land itself. <clears throat> also labor, right? Labor is always limited. We have only limited numbers of interpreters in the world to create new ideas. We have only limited amounts of technicians to do, um, uh, let's say, a sample of computer or cars, right? We have limited labors on, uh, in nursing. We have limited labors in uh, law, right? Or, or um, uh, legal uh, uh, divisions. So any particular types of uh, work or uh, skilled worker, it's limited in the world. Capital referred to um, any kind of uh, productions related uh, resources that it's not labor. So for example, computer, factory plants, uh, tractor in a farm, uh, tools like a hammer uh, at work, right? So a pen or pencil, projectors. So those are the capitals. Again, they are scarce and limited. 
entrepreneurs right or enterprise in general are the people who create new ideas again those are very limited also so when we talk about scarce resources you can actually refer to these four types of scarce resources in general and how we are making use of these resources to create what we want so for example if we want a, com a computer from apple well first of all we need someone to produce it labor we need the equipment to produce it which is capital we need someone to come up with the design of the computer, which is entrepreneurships. And then we need the factory uh, to build on the land, which is the, uh, the land, natural resources, and electricity, natural resources. So any forms of productions in the world, any kind of production in the world, always related to the scarcity problems here. So what if we don't have scarcity? Right. So what if we do have unlimited amounts of these resources? Well, unfortunately, if we do not have scarcity, well, there will be no study of economics at all. Because economic, it's always based on this first principles that we do have scarcity on every single thing in our life, including sunlight, even sun power, right? Solar power has its own limits even though it has a very very huge limit right but at some date well the sun is going to die out and we will not have that power from solar anymore so if you think about the world we live in there is almost never a thing that is unlimited or not scarce so without the scarcity there is no study of economics at all because you can actually take as much time as you want to complete anything in your life right to 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 finish uh, or to achieve whatever you want well in economics there are two main branches that we study right microeconomics and macroeconomics uh, well in this semester we are going to focus on the microeconomics which is the study of individual actions by firm or individual uh, households. Uh, it's basically a dynamic interactions between buyer and sellers uh, in the economy, right? Most likely we are going to focus on the interaction between buyer and seller. And macroeconomics, on the other hand, actually study a much bigger scope of the study uh, of the economic activity. So we usually have the study of the aggregate uh, numbers, for example, like uh, GDP, right? The total output of the country or maybe uh, unemployment rates, right? So the total employment in the country, or maybe inflation, the overall price level in the, in the countries. So those are the study of macroeconomics. So uh, macro, it's much more bigger scope, but micro, it's much more smaller scope and more, more focus um, on a particular agent's uh, activities, which is fun to study. And I, I guarantee you, you will find, ultimately find some of these topics uh, fascinating uh, to know. So even though they are uh, separated um, in two main branches um, in economics uh, in general, but I can guarantee you um, if you are taking Econ 1 um, uh, with this Econ 3, um, most of the topics uh, can be um, uh, complementary, right? So some of the topics that you study in micro also helps you to understand the overall uh, uh, operations of the macro uh, economy. So again, uh, I don't want to go uh, over every single um, slide in detail this, uh, in tonight. I um, just want to kind of like show you, well, there is like a list of topics that you can refer in microeconomic study. And there is a list of topics you can actually um, uh, find in macroeconomic study. Uh, but um, I am hoping the, uh, the, uh, the e-textbook is going to help you a little bit more on this topic here. Also, study economics, it's, it's fun because um, I think um, there is not many, um, uh, there's not many uh, um, major out there that actually give you the uh, flexibility to, to study human behavior, right, or decision science um, in a more systematic way than economics. Economic, it's actually a very, very powerful and very, very interesting study that helps you to understand how individual making the decisions based on the constraint they face in life. So therefore, most of the time when we are trying to study something, we will build a model. Model, it's basically a general um, framework that helps simplify the complexity of the world 
in order to extract the interactions of different variables um, in our study. So for example, um, right, many of you guys understand the, the Newton law, right? Everyone knows, well, how do we learn there is a gravity? Well, because the apple dropped one day and then Newton is the one who got hit by the apple and then he started thinking, hey, how come something that actually fall on the ground, right? And then at the end of the day, scientists find out, hey, you know what, we can build a model and the model tell us, well, the apple, it's not falling on the ground. The apple, it's moving towards the center of the earth. It's being pulled by the center of the earth. And it has a speed, right? It has a speed, a constant speed, uh, accelerations uh, toward the earth. And that is fascinating. And in economics, we have something that is very similar to this kind of model. We are going to study the behavior of humans and we are trying to find out how someone will make decisions, whether they buy more or buy less of the goods in the markets, right? Based on the conditions or constraints that they face. So therefore there are many things that we are going to cover that we will um, generalize by a model uh, later in the topics. <clears throat> Well, in the study of microeconomics, uh, there are many topics that it's also interesting. So for example, um, later we are going to have uh, many of our um, chapter talks about efficiency and equity. So efficiency basically deal, um, it's, it's referred to how we deal with our resources, how we use our resources to generate the most of the output we need. Um, equity, on the other hand, actually refer to the distributions of the wealth and how we are using the resources to provide an equal share of the outputs. Well, I can give you a very simple example here. So for instance, we can think about parking at the campus, CCSF campus. Well, in order to have the most efficient um, parking space in CCSF, if one day we are designing the campus, we can actually set every single space as a parking spot for cars, right, in general. Now, the problem is, what about those disabled people who want to come to campus, right? Disabled people actually are the one who need special care. They need to walk a long distance to the campus. It's not easy for them. So we have to provide them solutions. We have to actually share most of the close uh, parking spots uh, with the disabled people right, in the campus. And now the equity problem will arise. So we want to provide those uh, resources, right, the, the parking spots to disabled people in a more equal way, right, in a more specific way. Well, then what happened is we have to make some of this parking spot to be a disabled designated parking. Well, what is the problem with that? When we are trying to uh, find a solution to provide this equity solutions to the society, we were trying to make uh, things a little bit more fair, right? Then we have to sacrifice some efficiency, right? In this case, some of this disabled parking might not be occupied by a car because well, some of these uh, disabled uh, students or faculty might not be on campus every day. That means, well, some of these spots might be not used at most of the time. If we turn this into efficiency uh, solutions, we should turn every disabled parking to a non-disabled, non right? Everyone can park. Then we can utilize all the parking spots, right? That's the most efficient solutions but that will losing out the equity part. So therefore in economic, there is always a discussions of the trade-off, right? The, 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 the balance of the two uh, equity and efficiency. And later you are gonna see many of this uh, problem will come up uh, in, the, in the discussions. And also in economics, we always talk about um, problems in two ways. So one way uh, is how we actually raising a question in a positive way. So what do we mean by positive questions? So positive questions are basically the types of question we can answer only just by one way, by facts, by information, by data. It cannot have any other solutions, right? Only one correct answer. 
it's almost like answering a math question. One plus one always equals two, to two. But sometime people actually arise what we call a normative questions. So what is a normative questions? A normative questions basically involve with questions that relate to society belief, right? Social, social, social beliefs or uh, religious belief or personal opinion. So let me give you an example <clears throat> to demonstrate the two types of questions, which is very important because later on we are going to arise a lot of the economic questions. Sometimes it could be positive, and most of the things that you learn in this class are positive questions, but sometimes it could be normative. So for example, a positive question could be if you go to a classroom, right? You sit into a classroom, a face-to-face -face class, and your instructor actually asks the questions. Oh, how many people attend the class today? Well, literally, the instructor can just by head counts, right? He can point at every single student and count one, two, three, four, five. And then he can actually count the actual number of students. And no one can disagree with that number, right? And that kind of question is what we call a positive question. Well, what is a normative question? Well, for instance, maybe when I'm asking questions, hey, how do you think uh, 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 Jennifer Nopes actually looks like on, on, this, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this picture, right? So Jennifer Nopes actually wearing something really nice, right? And then I would say, oh, okay, well, it looks pretty nice, right? It looks great on her. But there might be some other people might say, hey, you know what? I don't think this fit her style, right? I don't think this is a right dress for her. Well, in this case, well, can you say any of these two people are wrong? Well, you can. Because why? Because this question, it's a normative one. There is no one definite answer. It's all based on opinions, based on the professionals, based on the beliefs, based on their personal taste. It has no one set answer for this type of questions. So later when we are actually trying, we are, we're stepping into a more advanced topic in economics, you are going to find more and more of these normative questions um, that might arise. But of course, by that point, feel free to discuss with me and ask me questions. So in chapter one, I'm not gonna go uh, uh, too far on this list right here. Uh, I just wanna kind of remind you, um, uh, I think that the, the, the structure of this textbook is actually pretty nice. It actually break down all this uh, important principles um, by category for you guys. So you don't have to spend too much time to find out each of these um, uh, principles, where, what they mean and how, how they relate it. So um, in general, um, there are seven uh, principles that you can find in this chapter one. Uh, each one are basically like a like a law, right? Like like a like a restrictions that we we put on to every single decision making process. Uh, number one, uh, we know the world have limited resources allocations. So that means well, scarcity always happens, and that forced us to make decisions, right? So if we have ten dollar today. Well, immediately you have to start thinking, oh, how am I supposed to use this $10, right? Uh, for example, you go to lunch, right? Should I use this $10 for a hamburger or should I use this $10 for a taco or maybe for a sandwich? Immediately, because you're only limited with these resources on hand, you have to start thinking about what decision is best for you. So limited resources is the key to the study of economics and it forced everyone to start making decisions. And principle number two, every decisions come with a trade-off. Just like how we discussed about the equity and efficiency. You're trying to get the most efficient outcome or you might lose some efficient, uh, equity in the society. So therefore, any decisions in our life, regardless how you want to think about it, it always come with an opportunity cost. It have to give up something first in order to get you something in your life. And number three, we know that specializations will always in, uh, lead to a gain for all the party involved in that particular uh, interactions. So in chapter two, you are going to learn this model called production possibility frontier model. And you will learn why 
countries or maybe people, they want to specialize on a particular professions or particular types of productions in order to gain from trading with each other. And that's related to the principle here. And number four, every economic agent, people, firm, government, always respond to incentive. They always respond to economic incentive. Whenever they know they have to do something to get what they want, and they will change the behavior. So uh, in the later chapter, we are going to study how governments actually change your behavior by putting out uh, public policy into the market, which is at some point, you can think about this types of action could be very evil. Uh, for instance, right, so how governments can convince people not to smoke in our country. Right? Smoking, it's a freedom. Well, how the government using the power of markets to change the behavior of the people who are smoking. Right? It's pretty simple. Right? Put a tax on them. Right? Tax, taxation, it's basically an economic incentive for people to change the behavior in the markets. And later, we are going to see how taxation actually work in a market and how it create this um, um, uh, 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 motivations for student uh, for for people to change the behavior in the market also um, when people making decisions um, it's rarely they are making decisions of either yes or no right most of the time they are making decisions based on margins right they only make decisions based on a little bit of change they only seek for change of little by a bit they never actually, so no one in the world, like Bill Gates, uh, he won't actually say, hey, you know what? I have $10 billion right, uh, of wealth. I am going to all in and put it into a, uh, uh, a business for, for creating a, a new Microsoft uh, uh, development, right? Um, he always trying to think a little bit at a time, right? So let's try run a little bit I right, put in ten thousand dollar right, to start something, and then well, if it needs more, I'll well, put another ten thousand to see what comes up. Until at certain point, maybe he will think that it's not working, right? It's not the benefit. It's not uh, outweighing the the cost, and I will stop doing it, right? So everyone do that the same. You too, you are doing exactly the same way. How Bill Gates making her, his decisions, right? You will decide how much time you want to spend in this class a little bit by a time, right? Maybe uh, 10 hour for the first week and then eight hour for the second week. And then slowly you wanna actually cut back on the hour every week because you think, well, I don't need that much time to, to master the material or to, to finish the assignment. And slowly you will find that point that provides you with the best amounts of time, right? To maximize your, your use of time in this class to get the best grade and still uh, balancing your life right with other things so every decision is made by the margins and that's how rational people do their decision making and the last uh, two right here it's related to um, government um, we know markets um, sometimes can fail and we will talk about those uh, failure situations later um, governments can be the agents in the economy to fix those market failure situations so what it means is if the market is not running efficiently, the government can force the market to run efficient again. Well, we are going to see some of this policy in chapter five and six, uh, I, mean, I mean, chapter four and five. Um, so uh, when we get there and you will find fascinating on how those policy can adjust the market situations. And the last, uh, principle here, which I think it's very, very important uh, to most of us to understand about economy uh, or economic in general. The growth of our economy today, it's mainly based on our creativity. We know the economy can grow so fast, it's not because we're working hard. The economy can grow fast, we can get more and more every day, it's only because we are creating new idea, new way to produce, new way to do our uh, everyday task, uh, new way to apply our technology, for example, like using a phone on many different applications in your life to save time. Um, uh, uh, those are the, um, those are the um, creativity that we, we apply in our life to improve our well being. 
So keep in mind, economic growth is not just increased by the increased number of workers or increased uh, number of capital used in, in our uh, economy. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, most of this growth are coming from creativity. And therefore, when we think about markets uh, later, uh, you want to also understand why we want to make some of the firm to be a monopoly, to monopolize the markets, to get all the uh, profits, right? Because, well, without their creativity, without their, their thoughts, without Apple coming up with Apple phone, right? The iPhone, without, uh, without Samsung coming up with all these uh, smart devices, without um, uh, Facebook coming up with all this uh, new way of connecting friends, uh, we won't get here uh, today to enjoy life that much. So therefore, uh, we have to understand sometimes we do um, treat those um, uh, monopoly very seriously. We don't want them to be a monopoly, but then at, at some level, we still want them to be the monopoly to, to, keep, be, uh, to keep innovative right, uh, of our economy. So those are the key principles that you will find in chapter one. And of course, you, you're not uh, asked to master all these uh, uh, topics here in chapter one. Uh, you will be uh, practicing some of these uh, definitions in the assignment. But uh, generally speaking, we are going to go through uh, and relate all this principle later in the, in, in other, uh, in the later chapters uh, throughout the semester. So don't think that you have to master every single topic in chapter one now, but um, just take a look at the textbook and read it chapter one. And I believe you will be very, very fine uh, doing the assignment and activity uh, by the second week of the semester. All right, so I think um, um, I will be uh, stopping my uh, presentation for chapter one here. And if you do have any questions, of course, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. And uh, let me just stop the recording now.